hi guys welcome back to inside republic if you're new to the channel thank you for joining us today we'll be talking about sugar daddies and sugar babies this is a topic that has been gaining popularity in the last couple of years but firstly let us take a look at this tiktoker then we'll discuss afterwards if you are not going to book the private jet for me to have coffee in cape town next caller reasons why i literally get turned off by men if you don't open the door for me, it's chai. You don't pull out the chair for me, it's chai, baby. If you don't buy me flowers, it's also chai for you, baby. I don't like asking. I do not date men that want me to ask. I date high-value men that know what a woman needs. The moment I tell you I'm doing a coffee date or a breakfast date with a friend, you must. it's either you're going to ask me how much i need or you are literally just gonna send the money if you don't it's chai if you are not gonna ask me what i want for a monthly allowance or you're just not going to tell me that this is how much i'm gonna give you for a monthly allowance it's chai baby if you are not gonna buy me the rolls royce that i want it's also chai because whomst are you shut up as a man you are gonna book those trips you are gonna make it happen and i literally do not care if we just met you're not getting the coochie this is one of the reasons why i always say to the girlies close your legs open your mind use your mind get the bag and be smart and land a man that is your man that is the man that you're gonna open your legs for not just anybody people are becoming more aware of sugar daddy culture which is often wrapped in mystery and shame in what way does this happen is this a sign of modern freedom or a sneaky way to take advantage of people as economic problems get worse and social rules change these connections give us a unique way to look at modern issues of power money and love the point of this particular video is to break down the appeal the complexity as well as the effect of sugar daddy culture so that you can see where it fits in today's society sugar daddy relationships are very different from one another because each person involved is different for some the arrangement is a win-win situation they get company in closeness in exchange for money sugar babies may get money for things like school gifts or their own living cost they are usually young women but more and more they are non-binary people also involved for sugar daddies the law of sugar babies is often being with beautiful active people without the normal responsibilities of a relationship things can go wrong in these interactions though since real feelings can emerge emotional problems can arise guys this is a reminder to subscribe to our youtube channel make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the all bell icon and remember that subscription is free of charge now continuing with the topic some stories from both sides they show a range of experiences some they praise the agreement for being clear and helpful while others talk about being manipulated and not getting what they expected and these stories they show how important it is to set clear limits and talk to each other in order to handle the complicated balance of financial and emotional transactions rating the best places to find a sugar daddy in no particular order though let's go we got a five star system because we're talking to five star bitches she's she's awkward because she's a half star they don't have that emotion five stars five qualifications we're going off quality of the material the ambiance likelihood that they'll spend how much you'll realistically come out of pocket and the overall experience you know what i'm saying might be controversial i'm giving a cigar lounge three stars because it, it depends on which one you go to for real the men typically tend to be fine i'm not gonna lie they have all age ranges in there like 20 plus so you could find any kind of man that you're looking for in there and they actually are quite attractive it also depends on if you go to a private or a public one if you go to a public one i would suggest the affluent area but if it doesn't have ventilation i'm taking a star away like that cigar smell sticks in everything just throw the whole outfit wig and hair away once you get home because it's gonna take some getting used to Hotel bars get three and a half stars for two reasons. Men with money travel. The first place that they go is to the bar to figure out popular places to go in the city if they have time and probably fuck the bartender if she's hot enough and you don't come along. The only reason why it's three and a half and not four or five is because if you go to the right hotel bar, you're going to come a little bit more out of pocket. Uh, pocket. The fuck? 
a drink that's like 10 to 12 dollars is gonna be anywhere from like 19 to 27 you know what i mean that's just if you strike out though you know what i'm saying also the men are there for a shorter time so they're gonna be looking more for like a fling kind of thing so you really gotta you really hey, how's you doing? quality restaurant bar gets a four and a half stars from me bitch men with money eat well they don't always go to them bullshit restaurants y'all want to go to that look good on the inside and have shitty food they go to quality good restaurants and sit at the bar and talk to the bartender and probably fuck them if you don't show up if you're picking up what i'm putting down you would be best friends with the bartender at a good restaurant at this point <laughs> like she's always there she knows the quality of the people sitting at her bar all day she know who the biggest tipper who the best spender if he goes to the type of restaurants that i'm talking about he's probably more sensible with his money so it might take a little bit longer to make his pockets hurt but if he cares about you it'll be worth the wait so it just depends it depends on you know the only thing that lounge men are good for is tricking. It's as good as club dick, babes. It's just like the quality of men in the club is like digging through garbage that people are still throwing trash on top of. It's like worthless because it'll be cool for a second. You're like, oh, this is so fun. It'll be way up like dating a scammer. And then when it's down, it's just like you can't blame anybody but yourself at the end of the day. This bitch almost got nothing from me. As you could tell, I like to meet people in person because it's just so hard to fake a vibe for man through text. And depending on what app you use, it's like, we both know what the fuck we're here for. Why do I have to act like I like you? Like, let's work out the situation first and then build towards the like. It, that doesn't work. That will get you nothing, Portia. Quite literally, the only reason I gave it a star is because the apps are free. Where to, Where meet, to sugar meet sugar daddies? daddies and wealthy provider men. So I'm going to start off with go old. Go old, old is gold, okay? Go for the older man, number one. Young dudes are still trying to get their bag. They will not take care of you like an old man will. Number two, go to nice areas, golf clubs, nice gyms, restaurants, cafes, nice high-end cocktail lounges, five-star hotels. Go to all these places, sit around, look cute, drop a napkin, you'll get what you want. A big part of the argument about sugar daddy culture is whether or not girls should be empowered or exploited. Supporters of this relationship say that they give people a sense of control, letting them use their attractiveness and companionship to make money, thereby offering an alternative way to achieve economic security. From this point of view, sugar babies are in charge of their own lives and pick their own partners and rules. Critics, on the other hand, say that this kind of relationships reinforce patriarchal structures by making power differences worse and making closeness a commodity. Sugar babies rely on their donors for money, which can lead to situations where they are exploited and the sugar daddy has a lot of power. Differences makes us think about what consent and autonomy mean in these situations, which forces us to rethink social norms and ethics of transactional interactions. There is no denying whatsoever that sugar daddy relationships are good for your finances. When people are struggling financially because of things like college costs, living expenses and debt, having a sugar daddy can make all the difference. A lot of sugar babies say they use the money they make to pay for school, pay off bills or get to a level of living that they couldn't have otherwise. For all their financial advantages, these things have some hidden costs. It can be very hard for people in these situations because they are expected to do emotional work. Their behavior could be controlled and they are afraid of what other people will think of them. Because of the financial dependence that comes with this kind of relationships, things can get dangerous if the deal ends quickly. And... Because of this, it is clear that there will be economic benefits, but the risk and cost must also be carefully considered. Sugar daddy relationships happen where love, money, and power meet. A lot of the time, this kind of relationships make it hard to tell the difference between real love and money, which makes things very confusing. What powers are at play are affected by the fact that the sugar daddy has control over the money and the sugar baby provides company. To get through these interactions, you need to know the different rules and boundaries that each person sets to keep a good balance and make sure that both people feel respected and valued. Trust and communications are very important. 
looking into these patterns can teach us a lot about how people relate to each other and how money and feelings affect each other. There are a lot of different reasons why people become sugar babies. For many, the main reason is the need for money, whether it is to pay college or to take care of your family or live a certain way of life. The media often show how appealing it is to be financially stable and have the chance to live a luxurious life. But there are other reasons besides money that drive people to do things. Some people are looking for a mentor, a friend, or a journey. Making links with powerful and successful people can be appealing because it can lead to experiences and networks that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. To understand these reasons, we need to look more closely at each person's situation and goals, which means questioning simple ideas about those who enter into these arrangements. To understand the psychology behind sugar daddy interactions, you have to look at what drives sugar daddies and what drives sugar babies. For sugar daddies, the draw often lies in being able to give and help, which gives them a sense of satisfaction and status. Being with younger, more beautiful partners makes them feel better about their own self-worth and social standing. The following influencers tell you how to get the right sugar daddy. Let's talk about the four things that will have you picking the right sugar daddy each time. It's never a bad thing to hop from one sugar daddy to the other because I value my time more than I value his progress. I am not his school teacher and maybe if I was his long-term girlfriend, I might care about his potentials. But as for right now, I only care about what he is today. So here are four tell signs to help you waste no time. Number one, he's a gentleman. Financial generosity is the tip of the iceberg built on other character developments before the final stage we see in the form of money. Can a man who gives generously without prompting not give love, kindness and attention without prompting either? So dominating man or not, look out for manners. Listening to you, giving you help when you didn't even ask for it, and most importantly, kindness. Number three, he does not talk about sex. I mean at all. It's the first date and you can't find out of a hundred possibilities something to talk about other than sex. So if he talks about sex as comedy, trauma, or a flirtation, I don't care what anyone says, you will not get a dime out of this man. You can quote me on this. Number three, he does not make promises, he acts. All the best sugar daddies I've ever had were men who were giving me what I wanted while I was still telling them what I wanted. Is this the money you asked for? I just sent it. Is it enough? Okay, where do you want me to send the money to? I know what you might think. Okay, but where do we find that man? The trick is to be willing to wait for them. There is a reason I walk out of relationships that don't benefit me quickly. The good sugar daddy is here. He can't see you in that poor excuse of an arrangement. If a man wants to give you money, he will give it to you. He will not take any IOUs in the name of a promise. Or he was about to. He was planning to. If you hadn't left him, he was just about to. Number four, he has a respectful relationship with money. He has a beautiful car, a couple of properties, a successful business, but didn't feel the need to mention it all night. He lets his wealth speak for itself and focuses on the beautiful relationship at hand, as well as the requirements you have of him. Hit that follow button and go get a generous rich man. For me, if I was you, I was definitely not going to waste time with getting the Mrs. White combo because who are you? What are you waiting for? Why are you wasting time? Let me show you something. Babes, hello. Please go get the Mrs. White combo because... <laughs> Yeah, let me show you more. This is one of the things that you guys need to take in very seriously. Our sugar daddies, please come through and bless us with your money. Deliver us to rich husbands. I am the girl that I think I am. And my combo is the same thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sugar babies get money from their relationships but they also get emotional and mental help from them receiving care and attention from a donor can make a person feel safe and validated but these relationships can have complicated effects on people's minds they can cause problems with self-worth 
dependence and emotional e connection. When you look into this as psychological factors, you can better understand why this relationship start and last. When it comes to sugar daddy situations, safety is very important. Making sure that people are physically and emotionally healthy takes careful thought and action. It's important to set clear limits and expectations from the start and keep the lines of conversation open about needs and limits. Both parties need to know what the risks are and do what they can to stay safe. This means meeting in public spaces at first, talking about safety measures and being careful about giving out personal information. It's also very important to know what the legal consequences are and make sure that all contacts are voluntary and polite. By putting safety first, people can handle these relationships more carefully and lower the risks that might come up. There are a lot of social stigmas and false beliefs about sugar daddy relationships. They are often shown in a bad light and assumptions are made about the people involved and their motivations. These assumptions can hurt people by making them judge and discriminate. To burst these myths, you need to have a deeper and more nuanced understanding of the people involved in these interactions. Realizing that every plan is different and based on personal circumstances can help us think more deeply about the simple stories we see in the media. By encouraging open communication and lowering judgment, we can make society more accepting and open to everyone. It's hard to say what will happen to sugar daddy culture in the future, but the fact that it's so popular right now suggests that it meets certain needs and wants in society. Pressures from the economy, shifting social norms, and the rise of digital tools that make these relationships easier all help to keep them going. You know, I think the real enemy here is lifestyle content. You guys eat up lifestyle content so much, like you are literally obsessed to the point that it detaches you guys from reality. Think about it, guys. If you're constantly watching videos of girls saying, oh, I don't want a broke man. Like, if he loves me, he's going to buy me Chanel. Do you not think that it will automatically make you value money less because you think that it falls from trees? Because the way that they're saying it, it's like it's so easy to get a Chanel bag. That's why you come to reality and you demand Chanel bags from men. And what these girls like to do is that they like to defend themselves and say, oh no, I have my own money, like I work hard for my money. But if you think about it, people that actually work hard for their money would never just unprovoked say a person that can't afford a Louis Vuitton is broke. When you actually work for your money, you're able to sympathize with the next person and be like, yo, this person can afford a car. I know what it takes to get a car. There's credit, there's banks, there's interest, there's insurance. The fact that you have a car says a lot about how you're doing well in life. Also, what this lifestyle content does is that it distorts the definition of love and what love is in a relationship. Love is a doing word, it's an action. It's not a price tag of whether you bought a Louis Vuitton bag or a Mr. Price bag. Guys, do you understand how nice it is to know that a man earns 2,000 rand. He has to pay for a car, his apartment, send money home, groceries, and then at the end of the day, still buy you a bag from legit because you asked for it. That willingness to buy you something that you ask for, regardless of his responsibilities, is what real love is. And that willingness, guys, is something that money will never buy and you can never put a price tag on it. When your man is taking you out on a date, it's not that there's money laying around and he has nothing to do with it. There's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it and that's what you guys don't understand that willingness to adjust things and to make little sacrifices just so that you can be happy is where the real love is not whether the restaurant is starbucks or mcdonald's if you really understood the value of money and how life actually works you wouldn't make it your personality online to demand things from men every day it's i want a man that's gonna buy me this and do this for me are you not tired you will never see girls that understand what it is to work for your money do that because they know that hey those things that you're demanding they are not easy 
Instead, what they do is they appreciate the men in their lives and what they do for them. No matter if it's little or it's big, but you appreciate it because you understand. Also, these girls are very smart. They know that they can never get commitment and love from these men. They can only just get money. So what they do is they pervert the idea of love so that you can think that they are being loved and you can want what they have. What's really tied for you guys is sense of reality and common sense. That's it. This young lady made some very interesting points. If people know more about the issues and talk about them, relationships might become more controlled and polite. Sugar daddy culture is likely to continue to make people think about how love, money and power affect each other, whether it's a long lasting reality or a passing trend. With its complicated mix of money and feelings, the sugar daddy culture is an interesting look into how people interact with each other today. It can help some people financially and give them more power, but it also comes with risks and moral questions that can't be ignored. We can approach these partnerships with a more informed and balanced view if we know what drives them how they work and what they be the sugar daddy culture shows how relationships are changing in the 21st century whether it's because of changing social norms or as a short-term fix for economic problems guys thank you once again for tuning in this was one interesting topic so do let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about the sugar daddy culture is this something that has been there and is only getting the light now or is it something that started in the past couple of years let us have a whole chat in the comment section and let us share our stories if you do have any once again thank you for tuning in and make sure that you are subscribed to the youtube channel you subscribe by hitting the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen and then you hit the all notification icon with a tick and voila you'll be subscribed thank you